Hi there guys, welcome to the video and in this video I'm gonna take you on a journey, on a journey into ELRS. I've got the Axis Flying Thor module here. This is a 2.4 gigahertz ELRS module, but I also have this TBS Mumbo radio here. And this, this combination is not the most likely combination, as you probably know. In most videos about ELRS, you see an OpenTX or an Edge TX radio, and the YouTuber tells you how to configure that combination. In this video, again, well, this is the radio I have, right? So I'm gonna make this combination work. So hopefully that'll be informative. Or maybe entertaining, <laughs> if it doesn't work out all that well, we will see. This is generally my first steps into uh, using ELRS, so I don't know anything at this point. And I'm gonna tell you all the steps I take to get this setup working. Here we go! <laughs> you serious? So guys, again, a how-to on getting the TBS Mamba radio working with ELRS. Now, this has been done before, I know, but I haven't come across good how-tos. So I could have just gone ahead and uh, figured this out on my own. And if you are watching this video, I have figured out how to do this, <laughs> right? That's how it works. But why not make a video of it as well, so you might be helped as well, maybe. So the first thing I did was update the firmware on my radio. And in my case, again, that's the TBS Mamba radio, but that would go for any radio. To make the, the chances of success the highest, be sure to have the latest version of uh, OpenTX or EdgeTX, or in my case, Freedom TX on your radio. So as you can see here, I actually have the latest version, version 1.34 of Edge TX on my TBS Mumber radio. So again, that's step one. All right, guys, step two will be downloading and installing the ELRS configurator, which is a, a piece of software and uh, on your computer. And this is a Windows 11 computer I have here. And can you see the screen? I'll, uh, I'll do a screen capture of the, of the screen, what I'm doing on the computer. And it, it'll involve the module, also your radio. You'll have to put some uh, code, a script on your radio. And it'll involve a USB cable. So let's have a look what we need to do on the computer. As mentioned, you'll need to download the ELRS configurator. And I'll have a link in the description uh, down below uh, in this, uh, of this video to a, a site where you can download things. And let us see. My hard disk, there this PC hard disk. And uh, I've already, well, uh, actually I've already downloaded it on this computer, like here. Here is the Express RS configurator, but I'll show you where you can download it. So here is the site I've linked in the description. Download configurator. Pretty simple. It'll apparently open up a new tab. And what do I need? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, for Windows, I'll need this file over here, the exe. That's uh, executable uh, for, uh, well, the configurator or the installer of the configurator. Okay, so I, I already have it downloaded. Here it is. Okay, I'm gonna install it for all users. Uh, you'll have to uh, decide for yourself. Next. Okay, I'm gonna go with the default install folder. And uh, okay, this will uh, take, uh, well, depending on the speed of your computer, take a couple of minutes. And uh, finish, okay, uh, when I click finish, it'll also uh, start the configurator, but I don't want that. And I'll show you why. You see this folder over here, CPM210X. And that is a USB port driver you might need. I don't need it. And that's probably because I'm running Windows 11. But I'll also link 
to this driver and uh, well simple download and in case you need that driver uh, Windows will prompt you once you hook up your module Windows will say well uh, will will say nothing in my case or it'll uh, prompt you for a driver and well here is that driver okay so again I'll have that linked in the description down below as well and that is it now I do want to run the configurator and it's uh, put a link on my desktop hachiki day and um, allow access wait allow access I will say that it'll probably be beneficial to uh, disable virus scanners um, I ha didn't have huge problems but for instance once it's compiled to firmware Windows will say what well what the hell is that is that a virus so virus scanners might interrupt the building and uh, uh, flashing of your firmware so that might be something to be aware of okay so at this point You'll have to uh, select the module, well in this case we'll uh, be flashing the module first, after that we'll be flashing the receivers, right? Okay, so I'm starting with an AX and that is it, yeah, axis 2.4, axis flying doesn't make a 900 megahertz uh, module for ELRS so that's the only option then we have two options in this case a Thor RX and a Thor TX and transmitter T right so second option here and okay so at this point uh, you could opt and we will download the Lua script and we will download that to our radio so let's get the radio ready all right there we go we've got ourselves a radio and we're gonna hook that up to our computer via the USB cable at which point the radio will ask us what kind of connection we want and we want USB storage USB storage so up that uh, choose that in the menu and at that point our computer will uh, have an, uh, an extra drive and let's actually have a look what drive that is I think it's E oh yeah that, okay it's F I'm gonna check that PC and Mambo F and what is on it no that's not what we want this this is the drive we want. Okay, so this is the, the content of the memory card in your radio. The other drive is the firmware, don't touch that. You want the drive with all the folders like uh, BF and Crossfire, firmware, scripts is the one we uh, will be using. But, okay, so this works, then we get back to the ELRS configurator download Lua script and now it'll uh, ask us where we want to save that Lua, uh, Lua script and guess what that is that USB drive and again scripts and then tools and that's it I already have it downloaded by the way you can see it here but I'll uh, save it again yeah overwrite so you won't uh, be asked to overwrite the, that script and so that now your radio is kind of ready you've got the updated firmware on your radio and that script that is most of the things you'll uh, need on your radio you will need to set up your model like uh, usual right but we'll get that uh, to that in a second Okie dokie, we'll get back to the radio in a second, well in a couple of seconds and we'll have a look at the basic settings here uh, now so your basic configuration of both your module and your future receivers and I'm gonna leave this on standard over here 
and okay so a regulatory domain which um, kind of means where you are in the world it's either the EU European Union or the rest of the world and the result of that is if you pick EU you will be limited to 10 milliwatts so the output level of your module will be severely restricted now to that I should add I'm not a long-range pilot you probably know that uh, so 10 milliwatts is probably enough for me but I will pick ESM anyway what I'll do is I'll limit the output level in the settings of my module later on but by picking the ISM domain I can change my output level if I'm abroad which I will be probably so for when I'm outside the EU okay and then a binding phrase yeah a binding phrase is basically a, a piece of text which identifies you as being you so you put that in your module so the transmitter module and also in your receivers and that's the only way ELSR will bind things together by again telling the module you're you and your receiver you are you so this binding phrase should be uh, unique to you you can't have the same binding phrase as uh, a friend of yours you'd be uh, controlling each other's module and such so again pick a name that's uh, uncommon and that's only known by you preferably so my phrase right oops you can't see it but uh, there my phrase yay okay and obviously I'll change that uh, afterwards okay you are inverted uh, you will probably need to leave that on and um, the other settings I will leave most of these settings alone however I will use a home Wi-Fi SSID ID so this is the access point of your local house of your own Wi-Fi so this won't be the access point of the module but this will be where it connects to and also your receivers will connect to it so again put the Wi-Fi uh, it's a shame actually no it won't offer me the available SSIDs it sees that's a shame but okay I'll enter my Wi-Fi SSID over here and also my password and that'll actually be baked into the firmware you'll be flashing onto your module and receivers will make life a whole lot easier so please do that and obviously you uh, verify that you've got the correct one okie dokie let's have a look what we need to set up other than that regulatory domain binding phrase inverted features blah blah blah, blah. Uh, no sync on arm okie do we've got uh, wifi stuff set up okay so at this point we want to flash well actually build and flash the firmware to our module so I now hook up the USB cable to the module and the module will actually uh, boot up okay so in this drop down over here you should see in my case COM5 silicon labs if you don't see your module pop up over here then again you will need that driver we talked about a couple of minutes ago so go back to that there's a link to that driver in the description down below you will need to uh, install that for this module apparently and again I didn't have to uh, somehow it came pre-installed with Windows 11 okay then we need to build and flash and this will take quite a while especially the first time second time around it'll take uh, far less time and uh, fail to find that's not really an, uh, an error it'll continue again uh, a lot of things will will happen if you are into uh, software development you'll see um, libraries being linked compiled and linked for instance and at the end of this uh, procedure the actual uh, driver 
or the firmware, sorry, uh, will be uh, written over the USB cable to your module. Now there are other ways to write the firmware onto your uh, module, but this is definitely the easiest way, using a USB cable. That's why I'm showing you this way, right? Okay, I'm gonna pause the video for you. I'm gonna skip the video right to the end of this building and flashing procedure. And hachikide, I actually uh, just missed the end of the, the flashing procedure. But we can uh, over here see success, is what, then that's what uh, we want to see, of course. So now we've got, uh, first of all, flashed the firmware, the latest firmware, onto our module. But also we've uh, written our settings onto the module, our bind phrase and our Wi-Fi settings and which, which, whichever setting we've changed as well. And the actions we can take is uh, download Lua script. Okay, we've already done that, right? So with this button you can uh, write uh, the script to your radio again, or we can go back, which is what we will do and what's it doing. Okay. Okay, so now our module is at least ready. So guys, the next thing we want to do is uh, button up the settings of the radio. A couple of things we need to check and see if it can actually communicate with our newly acquired module with a new firmware on it. So we're going to switch the radio on, obviously. Welcome to Mambo. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, and what you want to do is, uh, I've already done so, but uh, you want to create well, I think you want to create a separate model for your ELRS setups, for your ELRS quads. So in this radio I have a setup for a free rider, so simulator flying, and a tracer setup, and a crossfire setup, and an FR Sky setup. And now I also have an ELRS setup, a quad. And we're gonna select that, I already have. As you can tell, and hopefully the screen is uh, visible enough. Hopefully, otherwise I'll make an overlay of that. Okay, so let's check some settings. So single click on menu button, and then I'm gonna scroll all the way down. This is all the way down, and I'm using an external module, right? So not an internal module, but an external module. And we're gonna set that to Crossfire. In fact, this uh, model in my radio is a carbon copy of my Crossfire setup. So again, set that to Crossfire. These modules, these uh, ELRS modules, communicate with your transmitter via the Crossfire protocol, or well, in the same way as Crossfire modules do. So that's what you need to set. Then we're gonna move to the inputs. See, you want to check if channel 5 or AUX1, your first non-control channel, is the arming channel. I actually had that set up differently, so I've moved arm, the arm switch, to channel 5. And you need to do the same in the next screen, the mixer screen, there. So arm is now on channel 5. You need to set that up and arming should be on the high value on 2000 for instance so so you can't invert that channel so with that set up we need to check if the radio can actually communicate with your ELRS module which we now have in the back right so we now long press the menu button now in this screen you should see the option express LRS and if you don't see that option, you've probably misplaced that script that we downloaded in the ELRS configurator. You've probably misplaced that, put it in a different folder on the memory card in your radio. That's basically the only real reason you wouldn't see expelled LRS here. So go back to the step where we saved the script, the Lua script onto the radio and make sure it's in the tools folder. Okay, so then we scroll down to Express LRS, hit enter, and basically if you see the settings, you now see the settings of your module, you're all done. Your radio can actually communicate with that module. Now this video is not about all the different settings of Express LRS, 
there are lots of videos and maybe I'll do a couple of videos. We are now in the basic settings, right? But we took this step to check if the, again, the radio actually communicates with the, with the module. And with that said and done, you've got the radio part of the setup done. We'll draw our attention to a receiver now. So let's have a look at a quadcopter with an ELRS receiver. And Hachikidei, I actually have a brand new quadcopter here. This is the T-Motor Feather 120. It's a 3-inch quadcopter. Uh, it's a toothpick, basically. Super duper light and it's a uh, 1S quadcopter. It's uh, less than 50 grams, the quadcopter itself, without a battery. But uh, it's super duper light. Okay, I already have a uh, receiver uh, installed in it. It's a Radio Master receiver, an antenna-less receiver, right? Or, well, it does have an antenna, but uh, yeah, the, a little uh, tower antenna, you uh, know the kind, I'll uh, put up a picture. And I've already installed that, and the installation, the wiring is the same as Crossfire. So uh, the receiver has a TX and an RX, and you uh, run that to a TX or to an RX and a TX on your uh, flight controller. Power it with, say, 5 volts. Is that... Yeah, I've powered it by, with 5 volts. And what you then need to do is power up your quadcopter. It's not bound yet. Obviously, it's a brand new receiver. And... Hopefully you can see the green LED. It's now blinking. Uh, at a steady pace, not super duper fast. And after approximately a minute, it'll start to blink very rapidly. And that's the sign uh, that that receiver has switched into Wi-Fi mode or Wi-Fi mode, if you prefer. Again, it takes a couple, uh, well, a minute or so. I'm not completely sure, but uh, you'll definitely see the change. It'll uh, start blinking very rapidly. So I'm going to skip to that point. All right. You can see the pulsing green LED now, right? And again, now that receiver uh, is a Wi-Fi access point. So we should be able to connect to that with our computer. Let's have a look. So we're gonna once more start Express LRS Configurator. The, the Express LRS Configurator. At this point, I don't have the quadcopter powered on, by the way. Right, we'll do that in a couple of minutes. First, we're gonna build the firmware and we're gonna save it on our local computer. If I wouldn't be doing this, I'd have my computer burning up uh, the VTX all the time. And also, my computer um, only has Wi-Fi for its internet connection. So it would try to download the firmware uh, while it's connected to the quadcopter. That won't work. Uh, I know, I've tried. <laughs> okay, okie dokie. So, device category. We now uh, will be making a firmware for our receiver, right? In my, ca my case, that's a Radio Master. And apparently, Radio Master only makes 2.4 gigahertz equipment. Then, the packaging of my receiver says EP2. And uh, yeah, Radio Master EP2400RX. That's the only one here, and uh, so I'm gonna pick that one, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no other choice. Okie dokie, and flashing method. Uh, we'll, we will actually not be flashing at all. At all. We, well, we will, but not with the Express LRS software. Okay, standard mode again. Uh, the domain is the same, ISM. And the binding phrase, it has remembered all these things, in case you were wondering. The home Wi-Fi SSID and password uh, also remembered. Okay, and there shouldn't be a device ready at all. Uh, my quadcopter again isn't on. So I'm simply gonna build and uh, this will again take a while, right? It'll compile and link and stuff a firmware for our receiver. Will take a couple of minutes. And um, yeah, I'm gonna get back to you uh, when this uh, step has uh, finished. Okay guys, once it's uh, finished building uh, that firmware, it'll ask us where we wanna save the firmware. And I'm gonna be saving it on my desktop. Hachiki day, is there a save button here somewhere? 
Oh, um, no, that's not how it works. Sorry, it has already saved it in my local disk and then happy temp happy model. Okay, uh, fine. I'm gonna copy that file to my desktop. There. There is our newly created firmware. So at this point we do want to connect to our quadcopter, so I'm going to power it up and wait for that uh, LED to start blinking rapidly. Now I'm going to connect my computer to my receiver's hotspot. So it should pop up there. There it is, Express LRS RX receiver R. And I've already connected to it once before, so it'll uh, my computer remembers the password. The password is Express LRS. All minors, so no capitals, small letters, uh, Express double S LRS. And that'll get you to, uh, well, that'll connect your computer to the receiver. And here is actually a web page of that receiver. And we now can update our firmware. Firmware update. Uh, Bestandkiezer, that's Dutch. Why is that Dutch actually? Oh well, we're gonna select a file. And again, I've put that file on my desktop. There it is. Update. Oh, that's fast. 100% flashing. Please wait. Fingers crossed. Update succeeded. That was painless. Update complete. And apparently you need to wait for LED to resume blinking before disconnecting power. Well, the LED on my receiver is now again blinking slowly. I'm not completely sure. Do I need to wait for the LED to blink quickly again? Update complete. Please wait for the LED to resume blinking. Hmm. I'm gonna actually wait till the LED starts blinking rapidly again. Maybe we can learn something from the page. Okay, it's blinking rapidly again. Okay. And um, what if I refresh the page? Probably my computer has reconnected to my home Wi-Fi. Probably, yeah, this won't work. Okay, then we connect to, again, to my Express LRS RX. Connect. Come on, okie dokie, and we have our page again. Does this tell us anything about the firmware that's on it? Yeah, it is connected to home net. Yeah. Okay, so my receiver now says that it's connected to my home network, and that can only be because the firmware is uh, written on it. So this here tells me that the firmware is actually now on our receiver. Yay! Okie dokie. Okay, let's actually power down our quadcopter for now. Alrighty guys, the next step we're gonna take is check the configuration of our computer in Beta Flight. So we're gonna start Beta Flight Configurator and uh, hook up the quadcopter to the computer via a USB cable, right? So it should, yeah, there we go. Automatically connects. Huh. Okie dokie. Well, Apparently it automatically <laughs> connects. Okay, so you'll need to set the port of your receiver. And in my case, my receiver is uh, connected to UART2. So UART2 Serial RX. UART2 Serial RX, right? And you'll need to check in your uh, quadcopter's documentation uh, what the UART is that uh, your receiver is connected to or the documentation of your flight controller where you um, which you what you uh, have used the next thing is our receiver is it on the receiver tab yeah okay serial rx over here and crossfire again uh, the elrs equipment uses the crossfire protocol to communicate with devices in this case the device is our flight controller and that's it. that's basically it. 
Right. Now... Welcome to Mambo. I have powered up my transmitter, as you could hear, and I'm gonna power my quadcopter. In some cases your receiver will be powered via USB, in my case it is not, so I'm gonna hook up the LiPo. Hot cheeky day. And are we alive? Yay! Look at that. We are alive. Is it actually correct? Roll, pitch, your throttle. Yes, and uh, again, AUX1 should be my arm switch. Arm motors. It is. And AUX2 is my flight mode. Acro. This actually works. So, again, in the b right Configurator port, you need to check the port that your receiver is hooked up to. And you'll have to set in the receiver tab uh, that your receiver type is a Crossfire Serial RX receiver. And that is it. No loopholes. Again, the most critical parts in this story were the flashing of the firmware, right? That's uh, obvious, I hope. But um, yeah, I'm happy to see that this actually works. Huh. So we see, what is this? This is probably RSSI or something? I don't know. I am as new to ELRS as you might be. But this looks kind of like a signal strength of, kind, of some kind. But I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, you know and then tell us me and the other viewers in the description down below. What is this AUX 11 and 12? Looks suspiciously like an RSSI or a link quality. Huh. Okay. So do I actually have a beeper available to me as well? No. This, this AUX 1 channel 5 can only be a two position channel. Which is a shame, because I use that for my beeper as well, ordinarily, but that won't work. Yeah, I'll have to figure out something else for that. No biggie? So, guys, my first ELRS flight here. This is generally actually my first ELRS flight, and also the first flight with this quadcopter, obviously, then. And it's a light, super lightweight 1S quadcopter, and there was a little bit of wind, so... But still, it might need some tuning. And also, it's a toothpick, so the, <laughs> the camera uh, leaves to be desired. Especially if you're used to digital quadcopters or digital FB. But it works. And after a while, I was uh, used to the quadcopter and it was comfortable to fly. At the top right, you see the link quality. The link quality, so that, uh, not the RSSI. The link quality and yeah, I'm flying pretty low to the ground. At certain points in the video I'm flying pretty far away. N not like kil kilometers, but pretty far away with uh, trees and cars and buildings in between me and the quadcopter here. There are two cars and trees and, and uh, bushes in between me and the car. I am set down actually, so I'm not standing up. I'm not elevated at all. And again, the quadcopter is flying relatively low. So this works, right? This is especially for a quadcopter like this. And then with a receiver without an actual antenna. Well, it does have an antenna, but not, nothing sticks out. This is um, more than workable. I've got the module set to 25 milliwatts here. Yeah, so a little bit more than uh, allowed for the EU, I guess, but still not a high output level. 25 milliwatts and most of the time the link quality is above 90. Actually, the link quality is most of the time approaching a hundred, so perfect. Great! This flight is not really part of the how-to, but I did want to show you that uh, things actually work. And um, I am personally happy that it works. This here video turned out to be pretty long, but it, I hope it helped you out. Right? It's a step-by-step -step how to get things working in ELRS land.
In my case with the Mambo radio, but it should work with any uh, OpenTX radio or XTX radio as well. If you are left with questions, don't hesitate to ask. By the time uh, you are watching this video, I might uh, have a lot more experience with ELRS, so again, don't hesitate to ask. I might be able to help you or other viewers might be able to help you. And again, if you know what that uh, those uh, channels 11 and 12, which look like RSSIs or link qualities or whatever, if you know what that is, uh, hit me up a comment down below. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.